Hi everyone and welcome to today's Chemistry Daily Booster. This is number four in our Paper 2 series. While this isn't explicitly listed on the advanced information, as we know from the first biology paper, then that doesn't mean there won't be questions on this. So it is still relevant. Don't just think I don't have to learn this because it's not on the advanced information. What we're going to be doing today is having a look at some of these really important tests for chemicals. And we're going to start off with the gas tests. So when we want to test for carbon dioxide, then we need to remember the chemical we use is lime water and it goes from colourless to cloudy. Now, those are kind of the three key words that you really need to remember. Lime water, colourless to cloudy. They will allow milky, but don't use other words other than colourless for its starting position. When we talk about lime water, this is just a solution of calcium hydroxide. And when carbon dioxide is present, the calcium hydroxide reacts with it to produce water and calcium carbonate, which is the white precipitate, the little white bits that are floating around at the end point. Got the word equation and the balance symbol equation there. You don't have to memorize them, but obviously you need to be able to say what happens. So I would suggest making a note of calcium hydroxide plus carbon dioxide makes calcium carbonate and water. But if you've done your learning for the first chemistry paper, then you should know what a carbonate ion is. You should know what a hydroxide ion is and the rest of it, you should be able to work out. Gas test number two, chlorine. Chlorine is a gas that's going to dissolve in water to form an acidic substance. It also acts as a bleach. So when we test the chlorine, what we do is we dampen a bit of blue litmus paper. So we have damp blue litmus paper and it's going to go red, then white if chlorine is present. It goes red because it's acidic and then it gets bleached, so it goes white. So blue litmus paper, red, then white is the test for chlorine. The next gas test we've got is the hydrogen test. So for our hydrogen, hydrogen test, it is a lit splint and it makes a squeaky pop sound. So lit splint, squeaky pop, make sure you do say lit splint as far as our hydrogen goes. For oxygen, it's a glowing splint and it is going to relight if oxygen is present. So what we see there is you just literally set a splint on fire, blow it out so it's still just glowing, hold it in the tube. If oxygen is present, it's going to relight properly. When we are carrying out any kind of test to try to identify a gas, we need to consider some safety aspects here. And to be honest, the most important safety aspect is don't whack that test tube right under your nostrils and give a deep inhale because you don't know what that gas is. If we're making chlorine gas, the last thing you want to do is inhale large quantities of it. Instead, what you do is you hold the container a few centimetres away from your nose and then you use your hand to just waft the scent of a smell towards you and you take a cautious sniff. This is not the definitive test for a gas, of course, because a number of them have no particular odour to them, but it does give you an ability to get a little bit of an idea if there is an odour present or not. Obviously, if there are bits you want to look at in any more detail, then we do have the videos on the main channel under the C4 playlist. You can use your revision guides, but I do suggest that you basically create yourself a few little flashcards with what is the gas test for, name of gas, and then on the back, write down those key points that we put in the boxes today. Because identifying those gases can come up on the chemistry paper, but actually also on some of the biology papers as well. And then, of course, don't forget to join us tomorrow for our next Daily Booster. 